let's finish off by looking at what we call population proportion. So in stats, we go and collect data. Now, collection is known as population. If we do get every single piece of information, then that's what we call a census, as opposed to a survey when we just get a small group. Now, ideally, you'd love to get every piece of data you can. In reality, it's not always practical. Anyway, let's look at this example. One million people in a particular city. We're interested in the proportion of people that would choose a prime number if we were to ask them to pick a number between 1 and 100. I mean, that's sort of useful information that we would like to know. The probability that a prime number was chosen is the population proportion. So the proportion of the population that picks the prime number. 25 over 100 is the probability of a prime number. There are actually 25 prime numbers. Then if you realise that, a quarter of the numbers from 1 to 100 are actually prime numbers. So that would be the probability of getting one. Now, when we did this census, actually I simulated a census using a spreadsheet and a random number picker, but I randomly picked a million numbers. Well, 249,925 people picked a prime number. Now, you can't predict the response, of course, because it's all random. So the result of a census is not necessarily going to agree with that population proportion or the probability of it actually happening, being incredibly lucky if it did. So that gets us to this idea of a sample proportion. So as I say, it's not realistic to conduct a census because right, it could take too long for a start. If, it's, if it's, there's a lot of pieces of data you want to collect, it takes a long time. It costs too much. You've got to employ people to conduct the census. Analysis of the results, well that's going to be time consuming again because you've got so much data to analyse. So it's more realistic to take a sample rather than looking at the whole population. That's why the Australian Bureau of Statistics, they do their census but they only do it once every, what is it, four years, five years, something like that. Oh, and I should say, and when we're dealing with a sample, we don't call it a census, we call it a survey. A survey is when you're just grabbing a sample of the data. If you grab 100% of the data, it's a, a census. So ideally, you would like your sample to have all the characteristics of the population. So it would match it, ideally. The reality is that's not going to happen either, because yeah, you get incredibly lucky if it did. But all right, let's say I surveyed 100 people from our city and asked them to choose a number between 1 and 100, and it turned out 29 of them picked a prime number. So the sample proportion, and notice the slight difference in the notation, we put a little, what do they call that, a carrot? The carrot symbol above the P. So that's telling us that's the sample proportion rather than the whole population proportion. And the whole population proportion remembers the, the probability. For this, it would be 29 out of 100.29. So it's slightly different. If our random variable is binomially distributed, then the sample proportion will be this random variable. It's that divided by n. The random variable was re representing a number. We're now representing a probability, so we're dividing it by the number of people in the population. Or, oh, sorry, in the sample. Probability that it equals, but now x is over n as well because we're turning it into a probability rather than a bit of data. So x over n would equal the probability of x equals x, which is our binomial probability. The expected value then would be the population proportion. We would expect that the sample proportion is the same as the population proportion. It doesn't always happen, of course, but ideally that's what we would expect. When it comes to working out the variance, then it's still our PQ, or P1 minus P, but now we divide it by the N, because we're talking about probabilities now rather than the actual number of items itself. So our population proportion basically gives us an estimate of the actual probability, the theoretical probability. So prior to doing our survey of 100 people, we wanted to see if that would be enough people to be able to draw a conclusion about the overall population. Should I go and sample more 
or could I get away with less or is this the right number? So we ran, well we say we, it was me, <laughs> we ran 50 simulations using a spreadsheet and looked at the number of primes it produced when I randomly picked 100 numbers. What, what proportion was it? Population proportion will be the proportion of people that choose the prime number. There's all the results from the different one. So first one there, 0.3 of them did, then 0.25, then 0.24 and, and so on. Remember we said the theoretical one was uh, 0.25. So yeah, look that one there came out to be 0.25. Is there another one? I can see one. Don't know that any of the others did turn out to be 0.25, did they? We would have expected, we expect it to be the theoretical probability. We expect it to be 0.25 because there are 25 prime numbers less than 100. If I work out the variance for this one, uh, it ends up being 0 0.00375. Well, let's say we're going to be happy if our survey produces an estimate that it's within 5% of that actual value. We realistically, we know it's not going to be 0.25. What we're saying is we would like our estimate, our sample proportion to be between 0.2375 and 0.2625. So that's going to equal whoop, x over 100, our random variable divided by the number that we picked. And we selected 100 people for our survey. So therefore, x multiply everything by 100, I'm now saying that random variable x is going to be between 23.75, 26.25, the number of people basically we're talking about. But you'll notice to find the probability I'm not using that because we're talking about discrete data here. I'm not going to get 23.75 and I'm not going to get 26.25, so I'm, I'm pushing it out to the limits of that discrete data. So the 23.75 comes out to 23, the 26.25 we push out to 27. And we're saying that that is binomially distributed, there were 100 in our sample, and we said the theoretical probability is 0.25. So that's the one we're, we're using. Again, if we use binomial probability, it would be all of these added together. It turns out to be 0.43601. So less than a 50% chance. That's not really that good, is it? We'd at least like it to be more than a half. A 44% chance that our survey is going to produce an estimate that's within 5% of the actual results. Well, all right, let's, let's play around with it. Let's normalize it. Maybe that'll change the results. So what happens when we do a normal approximation? It makes the calculations easier too. I don't have to add up all of those. So P is 0.25. Again, we want P, I'll call it hat. P hat is going between 0 0.2375, 0 0.2625. Um, my uh, deviation there will be 0 0.0612. Modify our Z score. And uh, we end up with, oh gee, that's even worse, isn't it? In fact, that's terrible. 0.1618, that one comes up with a 16% chance. Uh, so look, it, I guess we conclude that it looks like that sample size of 100 was too small. We should have got more people to get a better uh, sample. All right, let's look at some more examples then. So a recent census shows us that 20% of the adults in the city go and eat out regularly. We surveyed 100 adults in the city, show that the mean and standard deviation for the distribution of these two things, well the mean is really hard to show because they've told us 20% and we know the mean should be the theoretical probability which is 0.2. Okay, well there you go. I had to put some sort of working out down so x bar, because we're talking about a sample, so I use x bar rather than mu, is equal to p. Uh, the deviation's a bit easier to show some working, so we do that, but remember, dividing by the n, because we're talking about a sample here, uh, proportion, so we get 0 0.04. Using the extract from this table, so we've been given that, estimate the probability that in a survey of 100 adults uh, we'll find that at most 15 of those surveyed will go and eat out regularly. Well, let's normalise the data. So Z has got to be less than 
0.15 because again remember we're talking about probability here so that 15 out of 100 would be 0.15 minus 0.2 divided by the deviation so we're finding the cumulative for minus 1.25 got to use the table so that's 1 minus 1.25 read along 1.2 go over there down 0.05 and it's one minus that, so we get 0 0.1056. Ah, an online retailer claims 90% of all their orders are shipped within 12 hours of their order being received. On a particular day, 121 orders were received and 102 of them were shipped within 12 hours. State the sample proportion of the orders shipped. Okay, 102 divided by 121, there's the uh, sample proportion. That's 0.84. Now hang on, he claimed that 90%, well, that's only 84%. So the distribution of the sample proportion, we can assume here, they've told us, is approximately a normal distribution. Now assuming that the retailer's claim is true, What's the probability that in that sample of 121, that in fact less than 85%, because we've got 84%, what's the probability that less than 85% were all shipped within the, the 12 hours? Okay, expected value would be 0.9, because they're telling us the claim. Population is 0.9, we would expect that. Work out our variance, it's a very small one. 7.438 times 10 to the negative four. They've said it's normally distributed. Okay, so what is the probability that that ended up being less than 85%? Again, look up our score and we get 0 0.0336. So there's like a 3% probability that that happened by chance. So using the result from two, evaluate the reasonableness Oh, that's a hard word to say. Reasonableness of the online retailer's claim. Well, part two is telling me there's a 3.4% 3, 3 chance of shipping less than 85%. That there's only a 3.4% chance of that happening. In our sample proportion, it only occurred by chance 3.4% of the time. Well, if it's only occurring by chance 3% of the time, then no, the retailer's claim is, is not good because we're saying the majority of the time that happens, it's, no, it's happening. There's only a very small chance that that happened by chance. Let's have a look at this HSC question from a couple of years ago. Certain factory proportion of faulty items produced, uh, there it is, three out of 500. That's considered to be acceptable. To confirm that the machine is working, uh, they, they take a sample and see what's happening. So it's assumed that our sample proportion is approximately normally distributed and to help us out they gave us the formulas. Thank you. Production by this machine will shut down if that proportion ends up being greater than 4 over 500. Because right? ideally they got 3. If they get 4 or more, shutting it down. So the sample size is chosen so that the chance of shutting down the machine unnecessarily is less than 2.5%. So they're saying less than 2.5%. Find the sample size that we need to take to test this out. That's what they're asking us for. Okay, so it's normally distributed. Now I can't work out the deviation because I don't know what n is. So I'll just leave it as 0 0.006 times 0.994 divided by n. I didn't bother doing that calculation because it'll get too many decimal places. So I just left it as that times that. We're gonna transform this into the standard normal distribution. We want that to be less than two and a half percent. Put it into our transformation and we will eventually using the empirical rule, wasn't that nice that they gave us 2.5%. There you go, 5,964. So a sample size, I've just got to the nearest thousand. Pick about 6,000 will be required to see what's going on there. Ta-da! 